Welcome back to the worm. I'm saying that to me, not you. Well, you two, I guess. I do not ever like to leave this place for a multitude of reasons. And Sarah stayed here for a long time with me while my back heals. Got some kind of a bad disc pushing on nerves and whatnot. And then uh, finally had to leave here for a little bit. Tito's been staying here and some other friends and stuff just to kind of keep an eye on the place so the animals don't take it all over. And oh, 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 does it feel so good to be back. Walking back in. Gotta grab the four-wheeler, the trailer. Gotta run down to the car, fill it up with all my stuff, including a new tent that Kuiper has not yet eaten. You can see the sky does not look bad right now, but we have about one hour before it really starts raining. It's like one of them fancy uh, two-hour storms, three-hour storms. So I think Kuiper's gonna hang out in the cabin. If it's not too hot in there, we'll see. My friends that stayed here apparently didn't go in the cabin at all, so we'll see what it's like. Nothing looks too deranged. Oh, I forgot to turn all my cameras off. I'm gonna have a lot of pictures of myself. Wow, nice and dark. Oh, and cold. <sighs> Feels great in here. It's gotta be like, yeah, 60 degrees inside, 75 outside. There you go, buddy. No water? No water? Does this guy look any bigger to you? I think he stopped growing. Like the last three days, I haven't really noticed any difference. What do you think? Want to stay here? Want to go back to the car? You are always hot, aren't you? He's going to love the next few days. I think are high in the 50s and maybe low 60s. And then it goes back up into, I don't know, a lot warmer than that. But this dude needs a break from the heat. He hates the summer almost as much as I do. I see we've got some blowdowns. That'll make actually some really good uh, campfire wood for the upcoming party week. Can't tell you. Can't wait to tell you. I can't tell you. I could tell you. I will tell you about the plans for party week, which is coming up in only like two or three weeks. I think we've done it out here for four years. This year, we're moving not too far away just for, just for something different. But gosh, I'll tell you later. We got to do this. and Great Bernie's Mountain Dog Chew Toys. Oh, how badly do we want to get back to making that dog house? I luckily had some time to order some really crazy hinges for that uh, whole side of the house that's gonna hinge out, swing out. It's gonna, I don't know if they're gonna work. Yeah, it's gonna work, it always works. dog doesn't he seven months old uh, today or yesterday or something so a little over I think a little over half grown look at that already climbed underneath the dog house Is that your favorite spot buddy if you ever buy yourself a piece of property and take a chainsaw and a tent out there and just build yourself a life, I recommend once you get everything set up, never leave. Just stay there till you die. It's too much work. Too much work coming and going. We've got groceries, miscellaneous, guns, tattoo stuff, miscellaneous tools, cooler. Ah, I did wash the uh, cabin rug, the Kuiper rug. It was starting to get a little bit rank. Of course, you don't travel without more tattoo stuff, some more tools. It's your sleeping bag, some clothes. I figured while I was out, why not grab stuff for the future like hinges and uh, gutters? So I got 20 feet of gutter. I didn't even measure this. I just guessed that would be enough. I got uh, a downspout for over there, some other little pieces, whatever they recommended at Lowe's. My goal for this video is to unpack and take it easy. Got a couple little fun things to do around here, but I'm gonna try not to pick up anything super heavy or climb on a doghouse roof or anything like that. Of course, that cooler's about uh, maybe 80 pounds loaded with ice and food. I think it was actually really good for me to take a little bit of time off from being out here and making videos and all that because, man, I really appreciate it now. I stinking 
missed this place hugely. And I've been out here like 98% of the time for the last, whatever it is, like four and a half years. So no matter what you're doing, you spend that much time doing the same thing and you just, I don't know, you kind of, you lose focus or clarity on like what you're doing and why you're doing it and why you love it. But take it away for a few minutes and it all comes rushing right back. Oh, look how muddy you are already. Oh boy. He did best being dirty. I could tell just looking in his eyes. Oh, hi. Did you miss me? Dirt bear. This is the world I remember. I'm not completely sure that normal people travel with this kind of stuff all the time. You always got to have a couple 22s because you never know. I mean like Lysol wipes, headphones. Do you always take digital calipers when you travel? If I'm going anywhere overnight, I wouldn't do it like to the grocery store, but if I go like, I don't know, somewhere across the UP or downstate or something, I always have to take these with me. They come in so freaking handy. I bought one of these. Ooh, this is an even nicer one. When I was quite young and I don't think I ever used it. Magnifying glass for your old ass eyes. And then some holder honors. What I really need it for is the few projects I've done out here and been soldering. You end up needing like four hands, so that sucker will hold it for you. See, don't you think that's good four bucks? I do too. What am I doing unpacking? Gotta get everything out of the four wheeler. Fort Rains. I'm a little curious how he's gonna do. He's been playing with uh, Sarah's dog, Violet, nonstop, biting, rolling, growling, barking, you know how they do, except they're both puppies. So much energy, just going and going and going, which is great because they wear each other out. And out here, you kind of got to entertain yourself. <sighs> gonna have to rebuild this bed now. He's definitely not gonna fit on it. He's getting a little bit too big. Ah, he could still squish on there. If you remember when we made that bed, that was the biggest piece of that pet screen. I think it's actually called Pfeiffer Tex. Could be wrong, but it's pretty stout screen. That's the biggest piece I had, so that's what we made it out of. The next few days, I gotta measure something up and we're gonna make a big one, like a ridiculous one. Octagon kind of thing, so he'll never outgrow it. You can fit two or three dogs on there. And then maybe some kind of roof. Yeah, we could use a uh, sombrella or something to make an awning. See the cedars are shedding, which they weren't a short time ago. Oh, this is the only thing I didn't want to do. <sighs> Food for a week, maybe 10 days. Kuiper told me. <clears throat> Yesterday he said stop filming just sit around and enjoy this so I did I really wanted to make video for you, but uh, I listened to him. He's the boss around here I Had to fire up some coffee. It's well, it's 58 in here 51 outside Do you hear that? That's the sound of a Bernie's mountain dog not panting Amazing It's what we do every morning Oh, have a little coffee on the floor with a bunch of dog toys and a puppy on your lap. He still fits. Watch. See? Look at that. 100% on. He's still a lap dog. Oh. That's what I can't wait for. Waking up cold, coming down here, getting a little bit of burner heat in the morning in the winters. See, I always said I want to, I like giant dogs because they're better to hug. And he's just getting hug huggably sized. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit after this love fest and that cup of coffee's gone. Of all places, I found a full jug of real maple syrup underneath my bunk. I got excited to make pancakes or French toast or something this morning and I don't have the ingredients for either, so granola. And strawberries. There is so freaking much I want to do right now. I'm supposed to take it easy. I've got a limited amount of time before I got to do other stuff. But 
it's been quite a while. I think over a year since I made one of these videos and just like what I do in a normal day or a couple days. It's like a video that's not focused on just one chunk of a building project or something. So even without a specific project, this is gonna be some really fun stuff today. I am freezing, so cold. I just put a second shirt on. Really, really wanna turn the heater on, light it up, light the pilot light. But I think I'm just gonna let myself be cold for two or three days because it's, I checked the weather again, it's gonna be back in the 80s in three days from now. But that's good because I just thought of another project that I want to do and I'm going to need warm weather. Show you. Just just give me a minute. I bet a lot of you have been watching for quite a while. And remember, after I built the cabin, built this desk and I saved all the best cedar logs for this desk. It's freaking gorgeous wood. And I think it's gorgeous because it had a little bit of rot and some weather to it. And there are some holes in it. And now that we've done some epoxy work on the uh, retractable coffee table there. I'm thinking I'd like to epoxy this entire thing and fill in some of these rot spots and some knot holes and stuff. Can you see the slightly rotty spots there? There. There's a hole there. It's a big hole there. This is the one that bothers me because it's quite deep. That's where all the crumbs go and then uh, once in a while I just take a vacuum and suck them out of there. But all that stuff is what I'd like to fill in. So I gotta do this all before it gets too cold. Like some rod around the actual knot and it doesn't go through this way. It'll go like through this way and come out the side in between, like in this gap. So I think if I flood an entire board with epoxy, it's gonna go in and come out some weird place that I can't tape up. So I, of course, wanna, I wanna work on this right now. But we also need to build the door of the doghouse. We're gonna have to build a ramp there. Oh, we definitely have to do a gutter. So last night when it started raining, it wasn't even raining that hard or blowing, but it was all wet here and my desk was all wet. That's because it runs, the water runs off the roof, hits the top of the doghouse, splashes on the window, just like I was worried about. It like came right through the screen. You can probably still see the water on there. That's not on the other windows. Now, if you'll let me eat my granola, we'll go do something really, really fun that I'm even more excited about. What do you think, buddy? You wanna go outside? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I have a treat in my hand, so he's doing his tricks. Ready, go. Hey, I was I was doing something right there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know some of you have seen this before. This is, I believe, about 40 years old. This Ruger Mark II, of course it's 22 because that's all I shoot. It had some issues, so uh, I took it in, had a guy work on it. We're hoping it works now. You guys have probably seen this thing jam a hundred times over the years, and it's jammed thousands of times off camera. Of course, while it was in getting fixed, had some rust on it just from my hand sweat, some other holes in the bluing, so got this Cerakoted matte black. Looks quite nice. Also had him put a green dot on there because I like the green dot on my other 22 so much. And when people come visit, I want them to be able to shoot something similar to what I shoot. Same sight, same caliber, roughly the same barrel. So you can do like the walking 22 range together and it's, you know, you're kind of on par with each other. And you guys remember when I started shooting that, what I just call crazy slow 22. I believe it's a bullet that's like half the weight and I don't believe it has any actual gunpowder. It's just like the primer that shoots it. I started shooting those partially because they don't make a lot of noise. And when Ruby was here before, it was a problem with her. She would freak out even if we left her in the cabin and went down to the shooting range, she'd be kind of a wreck. And I really didn't want to do that to Kuiper, to a little puppy, like have him come up here. Kuiper's got some fur on the camera there. So like a year, year and a half ago, I didn't even know you could get these. Did a little reading. My solution to all this, and I don't know how it has not made it on a video yet, is to get a uh, suppressor. So I also had this thing tapped, put a suppressor on it. I'm not sure if there's a handgun out there that looks goofier than this thing with the suppressor. <laughs> when Sarah and I were up here uh, 
I don't know, a few weeks ago or so, I had this and it was the last second. I was like, oh, we gotta try shooting it. So we just threw at three magazines. I don't know what they are, like eight or 10 rounds each. And we just like ripped through them. That was it. And this green dot is way off. So I'm gonna sight it in real quick. The reason I'm doing this now, one, because I wanna try it out. And two, I don't know if it made it in the last video or I cut it out, I can never remember. After watching shooting in the Olympics, handgun shooting, I wanna try all the Olympic shooting. There's like their speed shooting where you get so many seconds to shoot three or five targets. There's, uh, you know, single-handed, I don't know what it is, 20, 25 meters. I don't know what size the targets are, but I wanna work all that out. And in a near video, probably have Tito or Sarah up here and we'll use both the handguns and see if we can qualify for the Olympics. I think we probably can. For anyone that's ever shot 22s with silencers, you'll know already, it's like the most fun you can have in this world. Well, sec third, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's not really like shooting that most people think of. There's no recoil, no noise. Ah, oh, good, clean fun. I don't even know where that went. And I'm like 10 yards away. My problem we have now is uh, my suppressor doesn't fit in my holster. I'm gonna have to work on that. Maybe grind the inside of this out or re reshape it or something. I just ripped them all off pretty fast. Looks like just a little bit right, maybe a little bit down. Probably shouldn't have plowed through that second cup of coffee before I came out here to do this. Which way are we going? Right. And a teensy bit down. <laughs> God, my hands are shaky. You can especially tell when you got something long like this on, you can see. You can just watch the barrel bounce around. Ah, I think I accidentally mixed up some uh, quiet 22 and standard 22. Some of these may not reload, may not cycle. Yep, there's a full power one. Not sure why that doesn't lock open. Got a magazine in it. I don't know if you can see in there. See what's moving? It's probably from the Cerakote. Something's a little bit thick in there. Might just need either some, some working back and forth, or we just need to put a little oil on that. That's the problem. Hey, I don't want you to think I'm shirking my responsibilities or anything when I say I have a lot to get done. This is part of the important stuff. Oh yeah, that's nicely gunked. Bummer. I have so much other stuff that I want to do. I guess I'm not going to be able to shoot thousands of rounds through this anytime soon. So I'm not going to bother taking all this apart and scraping uh sand and buffing that out of there it's not the biggest deal if it doesn't lock open i turned around he wasn't there i called him he didn't come i called him 50 more times he didn't come Walked all over the property, got on the four-wheeler, looked everywhere, screamed his name, didn't come. And like 45 minutes later, I got a phone call. Luckily, he's got an ID tag on him. Somebody picked him up a long ways away. He just, he just took off, which he's never done before. It's never been a problem. I think he is kind of going through uh, doggy puberty right now. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. I'm kind of assuming it does. That was scary. I didn't even think, I mean, wh what road is he gonna go to and why and where? He doesn't, he's never been out to the roads. For a few minutes, I thought he was just on a, a runabout and he'd come right back. Then after half an hour, I thought he probably got in a tangle with a bobcat or some coyotes or something. This really sucks, because all of a sudden, I can't just have him running around out here like he always does. It's been, how long have I had him? Five months, five months never been a problem look at him doesn't he look like a problem looks like a problem to me anyway we got to do some thinking now i think this changes the next couple days you're for 
problem. You know that? Even these people can tell you're a big problem. What are we gonna do with you? Well, I still have all that fence and uh, some fence stakes. I think I bought that before I even got him, or right when I got him. I was gonna make a little fenced in play area when he was a tiny little puppy, but he never ran off. He always just stayed right by me. By the way, he's heavy. It's not easy to get him up here. Oh, hey. <laughs> you wanna come? Come on. Come on. I mean, I really don't think he's gonna run off now, but until we do some figuring, he doesn't get to be free out here. Or at least until my freaking blood pressure goes down. Apparently somebody picked him up and somehow gave him to a cop and a cop took him to an animal shelter a long ways from here. I would not, it wouldn't even have crossed my mind to call animal shelters to find him. I thought he was in pieces. Too freaking cold in there. I changed my mind. I gotta turn the heater on. If it was just today, that's one thing, but it's gonna be really cold tonight and tomorrow too. Hopefully I remember to turn all these off. Uh-oh. Why does it say red? Oh. There we go, it went away. I'll have to come out here and uh Take the infrared around on these boards and stuff. See where this heat goes. That is one bizarro little roof, isn't it? Roof. It's doghouse. It's a roof. Yeah, you can see how close the roof is to the window. And everything that runs off that bounces right there. It's going to be kind of cool to put a gutter on there. It's too bad you can't really do any kind of serious water collection. It's kind of hard to imagine for most people how small this roof is. The cabin's only 180 something square feet and then it's half the roof because it goes like yeah. But also you get all the grit, you know, from the shingles. Plus you got to wait some years before all the water wouldn't just taste like tar and adhesives and everything. You wouldn't want to drink it. I don't think you'd really want to shower with it. I mean, if you had a big roof, you could deal with all that stuff or a lot of that stuff. But for the amount of water that you catch off of this thing, nah, doesn't sound fun. Doesn't sound worth it. If I had the money and the foresight, if I knew I was gonna be out here for quite a long time, probably would have put a metal roof on this place. But you know, the shingles were basically free. Plus the whole cabin ended up costing several thousand dollars. I thought it was gonna be like, one, one and a half. I never did tally it all up. Maybe I'll do that one of these days. Oh, uh, you know, I should probably leave all these open to get rid of that uh, first burn of the season smell. <laughs> For a while, Kuiper and I are going to have to argue over the uh, temperature in here. I want it 65, he wants it about 34. But, you know, there's only a tiny bit of insulation in the floor, which is all I really needed. So it should stay pretty cool. I think he'll be all right. Plus, you know, if he gets too hot, he can go lay in the snow. I'm gonna have to take this thing back apart. Pretty much have to do it every fall before you light it for the season. See all those orange streaks? That'll just be like a little piece of dust sitting on the burner. You can take this cover off, take that one piece of glass off, and you can look and see just, just a morsel sitting on there. Wipe it off with your finger or brush or whatever and it goes right back to blue. I should clean it out right now. I'm not gonna, but it freaking stinks. My guess is I'm gonna use it for two days, just in the morning for a couple minutes, and then turn the thing back off, turn the pilot off, I bet for another month. Oh, I do miss this. This is my favorite thing in the world. Go over and make my coffee while it's warming up, then come and stand here. <laughs> Almost gives you the shivers, it's so good. All right, we got to give some serious thought to this situ situation here. I wish you were all here to help. You could weigh in. I'm sure you will weigh in, and by then it'll be too late. We've got uh, three or four options that I can think of. One, he's supposed to be neutered in uh, a week or two. I just figured I'd get him fixed as soon as I could, which is after they've had their uh, vaccinations, they'll let you make the appointment. I made that appointment, then did some reading, which said that these very large breed dogs 
actually will have a different body shape if you get them fixed young. So some people recommend for a burner at least a year, year and a half, even two years. I guess if you get them fixed when they're, you know, six, seven months old, by the time they're full grown adults at two years, they're more like spindly and laggy and not so like robust, which kind of makes sense. You know, it's cutting off a lot of their testosterone supply. So you think of the difference in like body shape between men and women. Why did I say all that? Because apparently when you have male dogs fixed, I'm sure tons of you know about this, they tend to stick closer to home. They won't roam as far and I'm guessing it would help to keep him around here, not taking off like that. I have no idea why he just took off. It actually wasn't even when I was shooting. We walked back to the cabin. I came in here, messed with the magazines, went back out and he was gone. I mean, he's not afraid of it. He's been around the silence 22s a whole bunch and it doesn't seem to bother him that much. If anything, he'll walk, you know, 20 feet away and lay down. So have him fixed. We could do that. Option number two is use that fence that I have out there. I can't remember, it's like 50 or 100 feet. And for some amount of time, if I'm doing something, he'd have to be inside a fenced area. I think that would really suck. You guys have seen all the stuff that I've milled, dragging logs, everything. He just kind of stays with me. When I'm milling, the chainsaw is super loud. He just goes over and lays underneath the table. The third option, which is one I looked into uh, from day one, is like a GPS collar. You know those air tags you can use with your iPhone? They even have little holders for dog collars so you could stick it in there. Problem is, those apparently ping off of other people's Apple devices. There aren't any of those out here, so that one's not gonna work. They make some that ping off of cell towers. Cell service sucks up here. Just happens to be in camp here on the top of this hill. You can get a couple of bars of service. I'd imagine that uh, one of the necklaces probably wouldn't have quite the reception. Plus, you know, it'd be running through the woods anyway. Cell phone collar, I don't think it's gonna work. And then there's GPS collars, like Garmin. Super expensive. They have an antenna that comes like hanging out the back. They're like for hunting dogs. And they have a pretty limited battery life. So you'd have to, not only would you charge it overnight, but I don't even think they'd make it through a whole day. They're many, many hundreds of dollars. And you know, if it only lasts for six hours, I think it'd be a pain in the butt. So what do we do? Get him a GPS collar, fix him, put up a fence. By the way, when I couldn't find him right around camp, the first thing I did is look at my app for my uh, trail cameras because I've got tons of them all over. Caught him on a trail camera, but from this one clip I got, it looks like he's really hauling. There goes, what, an hour and a half, two hours? I found one collar that uses just GPS. You don't need cell signal. You'd have to carry around a little antenna. I'll probably just throw that in my backpack since it's always with me. It's crazy expensive, like 500 bucks, but it's like half the price of all the rest of them. I'm not gonna look at this anymore. I'm just gonna get it. I hate spending money. Dogtra Pathfinder 2 on the way. Oh, $430, what a deal. Thing is, it's all his fault. He doesn't even seem stressed. What are you doing? Trying to make friends again? I'm not sure I can be friends with an escape artist like you. The thing I like about being out here, living out here, is not coming in contact with anybody ever. And it's kind of like a shock to the system that my dog just took off running and somebody else had to rescue him. <laughs> that he could even take off running and run into somebody else. I don't like it. I'm supposed to be alone out here, you know? Well, I'm going back out to finish uh, sighting in that 22. I guess you live in the cabin now, don't you? Ooh, that is the first time I remember feeling his ears and they're cool. Usually they're uh, nice and soft and roasty hot. Wow. He's been overheated for about four months now. Actually, what this thing is for, holding on to him. We just never had to use it, did we? All right, I got both the 22s here. I got two dots. I'm gonna shoot, let's say 10 rounds at each one, see which one's uh, more accurate. 
or precise. Let's go for precision, shall we? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Definitely different ammo. Oh, you know why? Because I just took this out of my, my walk-in pouch. <laughs> that one was in the sleeve. Pretty stinking quiet though, isn't it? Man, I'm still shaky. Maybe that comes with getting older. Is it possible I'm so out of shape just from laying around that I'm shaky? Enough of that. See if this one feels a little more natural. Wow, it is a lot lighter. One big difference, oh yeah, I'm gonna pull this up. It's like aimed at the ground. Look at the difference in grip angles on these two. That one is quite extreme. I always thought this gun looked a little bit weird because of the angle of that grip. Even like this with the silencer on it, this is still heavier. And a full magazine. 16 rounds, zero rounds. Silencer, no silencer. Wow. A little afraid to go up there and even see how far off those were from the dot. Oh, this feels so much more natural. But the other one has a better trigger, the heavy one. Those are horrible. What happened? That's the first one, so that's with the heavy old uh, Ruger. That's the second one I'm more used to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine, and probably one over here or something. I was going to wait until we looked at the target to tell you how far away I was standing. It's about 250, 300 yards. How embarrassing. Embarrassing. Dude, you look so sad. Don't look so sad, man. Problem is you can never blame a dog for something like that. It's 100% on the owner slash trainer. It's my fault, buddy. That's why, that's why I didn't beat you too much today. Even when I picked you up. You are so freaking excited to see me when I walked in the door. They were like, yeah, he was pretty nervous. He didn't like being here. He didn't apparently like getting picked up off the road. He's pretty wary of new people and new situations. Takes him a minute to warm up. Seems pretty at ease now. Except for that collar around your neck. Real problem. Have I told you that lately? Yeah, you're a real problem. Well, shoot, now what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to be taking it easy all day. Do you know you're not hooked in right now? You could take off at any moment. But you won't, because I have these. Let's have a look at your dog house real quick. Get out of my way, foo. <laughs> Here, come on. <laughs> oh, he got it. Now where do I hide these so we won't eat them like last time we were sitting here? Since this whole wall is gonna swing out, my feeling is it has to be adjustable. It's gonna be so much weight because it's gonna be an actual wall. It's not gonna be just a door. It's gotta be insulated just like the rest of this. Be like a two by four wall. So everything shrinks, everything twists, everything warps, and definitely everything will sag. But also, I think the whole thing is just, I don't know, it's gonna be wacky. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you turd, did you get it? Nope. It's hard to move a screw hole in a hinge like an eighth of an inch or something. You can always take them off and move them up, but I don't know how this whole thing's gonna be constructed yet. So I figure we need fully movable hinges. These are pretty cool. Made for gates. Swings open like that. They actually have springs in them. And you can adjust this barrel in and out. And they're two hinges, so if the door was swinging out towards you like this, hinged to the wall, you'd be able to tip the door up, tip it down, and I guess push it out because you could move both those barrels the same direction. But what's happened in the man cave with that door I built is the whole thing is basically sagged straight down, and these don't give you any way to lift the entire door. You'd end up you know, raising this side up and then going, taking the thing down and using a planer and chopping pieces off, which I've done in there. So these were good. I don't know what these were like in the range of 20 bucks for a set. 
And then, I didn't really want to do it, but I talked this over with Tito, and he thought it was the right thing to do. These are also gate hinges. They're all plastic. I read a whole bunch of reviews and people said they're plenty stout. Also have a giant spring in there. But these are fully three, three way adjustable, four way, many way adjustable. You can actually see the hinges on the back are kind of set at different heights. So if this is attached over there, you can tip the door. You can actually change the spring tension and you can lift the whole thing. You can see right there what it adjusts. And this one goes the opposite direction. Pretty sweet. Man, for plastic, they do seem very well built. Just thought you should see these. Pretty cool, huh? I prefer to work on this next, but we might as well take advantage of the warm weather and redo my desk in there. I guess this video has just turned into a preview of stuff I want to do in the near future. I do have one other thing. You want, you want to see it? I'll show it to you. It doesn't take a lot of muscles. It's going to take a lot of brains, which it's not, there's nothing, I mean, there's not much. Hey, you want to go look at the uh, tent you ate? Kuiper, come. Remember this, buddy? To be fair, this is a little bit uh, sun damaged. Probably only has half a summer left in it. Called REI and they won't sell you just the fly, which really makes me crazy because all the rest of the tent under there is just fine. The poles, the stakes, everything is great, but not the fly. If you didn't happen to see this, uh, Kuiper loves being in the tent. And when he can't be in the tent, he still runs over here and like sits in the vestibule. One day I had the door unzipped, so it was all just like laying there on the floor. He was in here sitting on it, and then I think he got bored and just started uh, tearing at it. So I bought another tent identical to this to replace it because like we're going to party week. We're going to camp, like actually camp again back in the woods on the lake. It's going to be gorgeous. We're going to have Kuiper me sarah ruby maybe violet all in one tent so it's the right size for that and it's uh as usual it's party week but it's like nine days and this isn't going to work i'm sure we're going to get some nasty weather in those nine days it's got a replacement tent and here's my thought i'm going to take this whole thing apart probably rip all the seams use it as a pattern and make a top for this out of some umbrella same material that's down there on the solar covers Oh yeah, we gotta remember to take the solar panels and jackeries and everything with us too when we go to party week. But that'll make this my full-time summer ringworm tent. It's gonna be really dark in the tent. It's gonna be really hot, so I won't be able to use it. Well, I mean, on the hottest nights in the summer, I'll just have to take the top off. I never really go in the tent anymore unless it's dark. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Is it Sunbrella I have or is it the knockoff? You guys probably know. I think it's the knockoff. I think it's the stuff that's on the shower. But the knockoff umbrella seems to be working just fine. Of course, that's not in direct sun all the time, and that's only, what, a couple years old, but I think it'll be good. So we'll get done all these projects I've been talking about, I don't know, in the next who knows how long. If I'm feeling up to it, we'll go straight for the kitchen. But of course, that's a lot of lifting and milling and all that kind of stuff. So I need to be in tip-top shape for that kind of frying my nerves having to keep my eyes on him all the time now try to get in touch with Tito see when he's going to be here and uh if it's not too long we'll take you with us we're going to go scout out our campsite for birthday week Kuiper come oh he's got it today you really got it together just got a message from Tito he's not coming up Kuiper and I are going to go find us a campsite run some errands I was kind of hoping Tito would come with, but uh, I guess I can make the decision. Wait till you see this place. Hopefully it's not muddy. If it's muddy, my car won't get back there. But I don't think it's rained much in a while. Wait for it. Wait for it. Check this out. Man, it's just gorgeous this time of year. It's uh, 52 degrees out, sunny, breezy, and it's noon. Let's hope it's like this uh, in a couple of weeks. We're around about a billion places to camp out here. Yeah, look at these nice spots. And these aren't even what we're looking for. God, they look like real camp spots. 
like actual campsites, but they're not. It's all just national forest. Here's the good stuff. This stuff basically just goes on forever. It's gonna be a problem. I wanna stop and look at every single flat spot. Do you wanna look at every spot too? <laughs> Bet you do. I don't think I've been out here in a couple years. Two winters ago, so like a year and a half and I couldn't get my car through here so they must have Brought some equipment through and regraded this thing. It's a great little spot here. You could fit plenty of tents, but it's gonna take a lot of wind too. I've been down this peninsula before. It's there's a giant mud hole which my trailer definitely couldn't get back there. Uh, I could park here and walk in though. Kuiper, keep an eye out for poison ivy. I just read uh, the other day. I think it's a half ounce of Yerush oil, which is like the active ingredient, poison ivy, oak, and sumac, is powerful enough to infect everyone in the entire world on the earth. <laughs> Looks like you could drive to about right here. That's it. Yeah, that is an issue. All the wind coming off a whole lake. Plenty of chances for skinny, uh, swimming, fully clothed swimming. Still no ivy, that's good. Fire pit, but no good tent spots. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula is where God made the patterns for the first bowling balls. He eventually got it worked out. It's supposed to be a giant team sport. It was like, uh, I think, 14 people on a team and y'all had to put your fingers in the bowling ball at once. Whittle it down to one person, three fingers. But if you're hardcore and into history like me, you still do it the old ways. Well, that's the end of the road this way. I thought this went further. I mean, it's just a strip of nice places to camp along here, so maybe it doesn't really matter. The problem is when you come out here on the day of, you actually have to choose one, which is hard. They all look equally great and pretty breezy. Just haven't found that exact spot yet though. All right, let's try this other direction. Yeah, not as many people come down this way. Just when I thought we weren't getting anywhere. I think there's more spots back here. A little bit of a fire pit over there. Very shallow, it'd be hard to swim here. <laughs> Although it'd be really fun to put on some water shoes and just go walk. I don't know if you can see all the sandbars going out there all the way across. I'd say so far, we're gonna put this one at the top of the list, but I, I think they're better. Oh yeah, I think I've driven through this before. I think we're gonna have to park it and walk. Actually, I think I got my car stuck here once. Right there. Oh, this is the one I was thinking of. Couldn't get the trailer over this bump for sure. Yep, this is it. This is it. How freaking perfect. Nice big fire pit. Plenty of places to set up a kitchen. Oh, this is amazing. And let's see, that must be southish that way. We're gonna have to bring the solar panels and jackeries and stuff out here, so maybe we put them out on that point there to charge during the day. I didn't really think about that, being in a fully wooded spot. Yep, the sun is straight south. Let's go have a look down there. solar energy until maybe I don't know, two o'clock maybe three o'clock if you put them right out on the point there it's a nice drop off right there too so you could swim is this too much information you guys just want to see the party wouldn't be able to hot tub on the uh 
windiest parts of the day. But even if it was back here in the woods on one of these uh, old seldom used fire pits, set it right over top of that. Actually, that'd be pretty good. I'm just gonna bring some five gallon buckets. You gotta carry them, what, maybe 50 feet? Oh, this makes me so happy. Okay, I'm thinking we're gonna take that spot. We're gonna drive up as close as we can with each car, trailer, whatever, unload stuff, carry it in. It'll probably take us a day to get everything out there. Made it back. Went way out of my way because it was uh, like one, two o'clock. I guess it was like two o'clock. I was starving, so I needed a snack. Then stopped to get uh, fill my water jugs up. Turned around, and Kuiper had my entire snack in his mouth. So instead of having good food, I'm having freaking ramen noodles. It's good. Look at this. Came right here to get a uh, bag for my mushrooms kind of tripped me out. There's a mushroom sitting on my mushroom bag, although this one's fresh. Freaking chipmunks have gotten in here. They stay away as long as I keep a presence, but man, you leave for a couple days and they move right in. I think I'm just gonna do, uh, hopefully, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't say this. I'm thinking I'll do one more carving. If I get the doghouse done, I can go back to working on the kitchen. And I think, I think when this goes in the kitchen, it's going to be underneath the half roof. In which case, this won't be out in the weather all the time. I think I'm going to take it apart, replane it all. Ooh, maybe even, maybe even epoxy it. This is the same kind of, same kind of deal as my desk, two inch cedar. Remember I pointed this out. What did, I think we refinished this in the spring or something, didn't we? And the water gets down in the knots and then goes back underneath there and chips it all up. The stuff not by the knots and chips is just fine though. All right, Wendy and Tom, you're first. I'd like to give a special hello to Coda and Riley, by the way. I believe they're dogs. That's great. Some of your names are just a little bit too long. Maybe you go talk to your parents about that. Get it fixed. Here we go again. Can that just won't seal. Well, come on back next week if you like. I think I'll be here. Hopefully Kuiper will stick around for a while. I'll uh, definitely put it in a video how that uh, GPS collar works out. And if you want, you know, you could, you know, you can subscribe if you want to uh, follow the birthday week saga. Thanks for watching and thank you guys so much that support me on Patreon. I've had multiple times in the last uh, couple months where like my tears well up because people are so kind not just for donating and supporting me out here, but the freaking nice mess, I don't know. It's just, it's all a little bit too much for me, but I appreciate it, we appreciate it. See you next week.